Hello everyone, it's Michelle Lupton here with another installment of a Case Me a Christmas card video. Now I'm going to be starting with some Strathmore Bristol cardstock today because I am going to be doing a little bit of watercolouring, not very much really, just spreading out a little bit of colour here and there. And I'm going to be making this quite colourful card. Uh, I'll show you my inspiration on that shortly. Now I'm starting with this background stamp from Hero Arts. It's called the Noel print bold prints um stamp and it actually has the entirety of the christmas carol the first noel um, printed in a script typeface so i'm stamping it in versamark ink here and i'm going to stamp a couple of times um, which i often do with versamark because it's really hard to see whether you've got a really good impression i'm using my little uh, ladybird um, pressure tool here and I'm going to be heat embossing this. So I'm using some Hero Arts white embossing powder and just sprinkling that all over um, the text image and making sure I've got good coverage here. I'm just going back in with a little bit of extra um, embossing powder to make sure I've got every little bit covered and just making sure I collect all of the um, leftovers and zapping it with my heat tool here. And this is going to form the basis of my card. Now, here is a card that I'm casing today, and it's by the incomparable Jennifer Maguire. She uh, actually did a different technique than I am for the colourful background behind her feathers. These feathers and a stamp she used are from Gina Kay. Um, and she did one of her really cool two-for-one techniques. I'm not doing that today, um, but I'm aiming for the same look. So I've got some zig markers here in a rainbow of colours and you can see I'm just creating some relatively thin stripes of colour and then coming in with my water brush to just spread out that colour a little bit and get a little bit of a blend between the colour that I'm adding and the colour that was previously there. Um, so you can see I'm just trying to get a little bit of overlap there. Not a heap of overlap, just making sure that the colour is spread out and relatively even. But the way I'm going to be using this um, panel, it doesn't really matter if I've got a gorgeous blend or not. Um, and I'm, I've made a bit of a modification of the rainbow because I'm adding some pink in there as well, just because I can. Um, and then I'm going to go straight back to the red and repeat over and over and over again. All right, so I've got my whole background stamp um, covered there. And I also wanted some uh, red for the berries. And this red, when I spread it out, comes out almost pink, really, but that's fine. Um, it sort of blends in with um, the colours that I've got in my rainbow happening there. All right, so once I've done that, I'm just going to give it a quick zap with my heat tool just to make sure that watercolour is good and dry before I start die cutting. So I'm now getting out these dies from Uniquely Creative. These are called uh, Tis the Season. And I'm not going to be using the sentiment in this set, but I am going to be using the uh, solid holly leaves and the outline holly leaves. And the same with the holly berries, the solid and the outline. So I'm just going to be using my little compact cutter from Hero Arts here because these dies are pretty small um, and I can just do this really easily on my desktop without having to get out my bigger die cutting machine. So I'm also now die cutting, um, after I've finished with the berries, I'm die cutting out all of the holly leaves and you can see the die actually cuts out two leaves at once that are joined together. I'm going to be doing a little bit of creative cutting there to um, add them onto my card front. Once I've done all of the rainbow uh, holly leaves, I'm then moving on to the outlines. So with the outlines, I'm just using plain white cardstock um, and the cardstock I'm using here is Nina Solar White and 110 pound weight. Um, sometimes it's easier to die cut with a thinner cardstock, um, one that's slightly lower weight. 
But with these, I wanted to make sure that um, these outlines were sturdy enough that they didn't tear. Um, so I use the heavier cardstock. It just means that sometimes you might need to run the die through the die cutting machine twice to get a really good cut, but that's okay. All right, so that took me ages, but because of the magic of uh, YouTube... <laughs> It just took a like a minute or so on the video, so that's really cool. So I'm using my uh, art glitter glue with a very, very fine tip on it to uh, stick all of these little elements together. So adding the outlines of the berries to the pinky red berries, adding the outlines of all of those um, holly leaves uh, onto the colourful holly leaf backgrounds and again this took a while and yeah magic what videos can do just cut out all of the boring bits <laughs> and skip to the next bit all right so I did end up with quite a bit of glue on my fingers because I very often add way too much glue but that's just me all right so I've now pulled out this um, frame die which is from um, Altenew and some Hero Arts black cardstock, which is my favourite black cardstock, because I decided to go a little bit away from uh, Jennifer's card um, because that's what casing is all about, is taking some inspiration from the card that you're casing, but don't copy it directly. All right, so I've just pulled out the my original card here um, just to decide which frame I wanted to use. So I'm going to be putting the rest of these frames into a little plastic folder so that if I ever need to use them again, I'll have them ready to go and I don't have to cut them out again. Okay, now it is a bit tricky to adhere this down because it is so fine. This die actually cuts out slight, slightly thicker frames and very, very fine frames. And I wanted to use the fine one on this card. So yeah, it does bend a little bit. Um, I tried a couple of different ways of making sure that it was straight, but I just found the easiest way is just to be very careful, plonk it down, and then because I'm using liquid glue, I have a little bit of time to just sort of nudge it into the right position. So if there's any bit that looks a little bit crooked, I just, yeah, go in with my fingernail and just nudge it so that it's laying nice and straight. And a lot of this is going to be covered up by the holly leaves anyway, so if there are a few little bits that are a bit wonky, you won't really notice. All right, so I'm just going to make my sentiment now before I lay everything out on my card. I'm using this um, sentiment uh, stamp from Warm Blessings by Altenew, which I've used a lot this year. It's just some gorgeous sentiments in this set. And again, I am embossing in white embossing powder from Hero Arts onto some Hero Arts black cardstock. Okay, so... Uh, a little trick that I do quite often is instead of just cutting down my sentiment to a square or a rectangle or even a circle, I like to cut straight lines where there are straight lines on the sentiment using my paper trimmer. But then where there aren't straight lines, uh, I use my scissors to just fussy cut around the sentiment. And that um, basically it means that less of my background is going to be covered up by that um, sentiment panel. So now all I'm doing is just arranging these holly leaves and holly berries onto my card front. And this took a while on the first card that I made, but this one I tried to pretty much um, just replicate the arrangement as I had on the first one. But you'll notice that even though these uh, this die actually cut out two leaves at a time, I'm arranging quite a few of them with three leaves coming from a central point. Um, and I'll be placing my holly berries um, at the center of those points. Now I've also got lots of bits that are um, overlapping the edge of the card. Don't throw those away because once I cut them off, I'm actually going to use some of them to just sort of fill in a few gaps around the edge of the card where there's a bit of empty space. Um, you can always do that with these tiny little extra bits. 
Now, I actually did have a couple of like intact leaves, like whole leaves left over. So I used some of those as well, um, just to make sure that the card front was really well covered and I didn't have any bald spots anywhere on my card. See, I've even used this tiny little piece here and I'm just going to line it up so that cut edge is now lined up right on the very edge of my um, white card base. All right, so once I've got those, again, cutting off um, the edge to make sure I don't have any um, overhanging bits. And I'm going to be um, starting with the holly berries. Now, again, I'm going to be using most of these intact. So there'll be three berries at the center of each sort of patch of three uh, holly leaves. But um, down the bottom, there's actually a bit where I thought, mm, I only really need two berries there. Um, it just looked a little bit wrong having three. So I cut one of them off. I did that a bit carefully so that I could use the other one at the top of the card. Again, I'm using my liquid glue to make sure these are adhered nice and firmly. And I actually, um, after I cut off the edge of that berry there, um, I actually did leave it with something heavy on it for a little while before I added this sentiment. So I'm using some foam adhesive on the back of the sentiment so I can pop it up. And there are actually some parts of the sentiment that I added two lots of the foam adhesive because I needed it to sort of sit up above um, those holly leaves. So, so it sits relatively flat and I didn't get it on straight, so <laughs> try again um, and see how I go the next time. All right, so there's my card completely finished. So I'd like to thank Jennifer Maguire for being my special guest today. I hope you enjoyed seeing me case her card and we'll see you back again next time. Bye.